YouTube, Topaz Ace back for another daily review, and this one is to that Fat Joe Remy Ma all the way up the West Coast remix, in which it's the same as the other remixes, which is just adding new people to it. And who they're adding on the West Coast remix is The Game, E40, Snoop Dogg, and quite honestly, just based off that lineup, I knew this wasn't going to work. But ultimately, when you see a whole bunch of people doing a whole bunch of remixes to one particular track, that's how you can tell that that track actually caught on on the highest level. Because as you look at all of these remixes they done for this song, man, they jump from genre to genre, coast to coast, style to style, all of this stuff already. And which it doesn't show any sign of slowing down either, you feel me? I'm sure everybody nationwide, when you're in the club, you have had to hear this song at least once. But you know, it was common sense that Snoop Dogg was eventually going to hop up on this, you did? Because this has always been his style to ride the wave of whatever popular song is already out there and such and just be rapping on it in order for him to promote his new projects and which will right around the corner from that Kool-Aid project. But ultimately, it just doesn't fit with Snoop Dogg here. See, this is a lyrical club track where you're taking a commonly used saying and then applying it to whatever you want to apply it to. And Snoop Dogg never really been that lyrical of a dude all throughout his career. And then to throw on top of it the fact that he tried to switch up his flow to being somewhat of a Jamaican sound, man, it did not work at all. And I love E-40, man. What I love about him is how he completely mastered his flow and he polished his technique all the way around. But yet, in order for him to rap on this particular production, he would have had to flip up everything. And he's been way too far in the game in order for him to do that. Honestly, as you listen to his verse, man, it sounds like he's just running out the clock so that he can say that he put a full verse on it when he's really not saying anything at all. Quite honestly, the only person that fit on this was the game and I like the way that he flipped it up pretty much referring to sagging saying that he got family that telling him to pull his pants all the way up that was entertaining how he shot out all of the Golden State Warriors using punchlines and everything man he was honestly the only right person selected on here like if I was the one selecting people when I had the budget to do so I would say go ahead first completely remix that beat. I would say go get a solid West Coast producer. You don't have to get Dr. Dre to go ahead and remix that beat. And then go ahead and get a guy like, say, Hobson, keep the game. And then if the budget is allowing you to, go ahead and throw Kendrick on there because that would have been like the perfect three people for the West Coast remix of this. But for what we have, it wasn't terrible, but yet it wasn't any good. Quite honestly, you should only be listening to this so you can hear the game's verse, but that's about it. But this concludes today's review, and now we're going to jump into a brief instrumental from underground producer Jackson Yulin before we jump into the news and then jump into an article from DownloadPads.com. Cameron is getting a weed strain, and he's by the same people that gave a weed strain to Freddie Gibbs, and this is the thing that I'm telling you guys, man. The money is not in getting your own weed strain by somebody else and such, man. The money is in you growing your own weed in these states where it's legal and make all of your money off of that, man. Like, by being the face of a product, that's the easy way to get a little bit of change. But ultimately, we as a people need to be all up in there. We need to get all of the money from beginning to end because we've been incarcerated way too much for us not to. But anyway, on to today's article from DownloadPads.com. And today's article was about... I'd rather have five lions rolling with me than a hundred sheep. And this is a saying that I've heard a little while ago. Because here's the key problem that a lot of people have. Like when they try to build up a rap crew or something, they feel as though the more people the million, the more people they can bring into the table, the better and more likely they are to succeeding. When that is not the case. Like when you get too many people who ain't about anything, man, then ultimately you're running in quicksand because everybody's going to have their own opinion on what you need to do and then ultimately nothing gets done. But if you have five people that's about that action, that's really about that life, that's really going out there and trying to make this money, trying to build up the notoriety, and you all can bounce off of each other like that, then you got a crew that's actually going to succeed in the highest level. No matter what anybody tells you, there's hardly any strength in numbers. You don't have to have a lot of people, man. Your team just got to be strong. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at 
Twitter up there. And you can go to DownloadPads.com, that's down there, to read today's article.